And question 11, the final question in paper 2 of the 2016 higher maths. There we go, that's not been around for a, quite a while. A trig identity for four marks here. So that this, this is an equation to solve. These two sides are identical for all values of x. If you try to solve that, you just end up with 0 equals 0. The standard way is to take the left-hand side and manipulate it until you end up with the right-hand side. Well, there is an alternative which is to take the left-hand side and simplify it to some expression. Take the right-hand side and simplify it to some expression. And if those two expressions are the same, then that also proves identity. I'll take it the standard way. The standard way is to take the left-hand side, which I'll now state again, sine 2x tan x, and then do something to it that makes it look like this. Well, the first thing you notice is there's no tangents in this side, so I want to get rid of that tangent. Another thing is here, look, there's a 2x and there's a 2x. You're inclined not to change it, but there's no signs mentioned in this side, so I'm going to be getting rid of this as well just to see what happens. Now, you know both of those things. Sine 2x can be rewritten as 2 sine x cos x, and tan x can be written as sine x over cos x. Doing that gets you the first mark. Now, for some reason, simplifying that, which is really obvious, the cosines cancel out and you're just left with 2 sine squared. For some reason, just writing that gets you the next mark. But now there's two roots over to here. You can't just jump in with that straight away because there is a connection between cos 2x and sine squared x. There's also a connection between cos 2x and cos squared x. So I'll have to incorporate that but it'd be better stating at the side first just to make sure you got it correct. Cos 2x can be written as 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Which means straight away, if you rearrange this equation, 2 sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cos 2x as required. And you think, oh, I can't just throw that in because it looks as if I haven't done anything. But I have mentioned it at the side here. So I could validly just say equals 1 minus cos 2x by this identity which I'll call 1. Now, using this identity gets a mark and then that's what was required. So the final mark is for saying that's the required result, therefore the identity is shown. Or you could put as required. Or you could put QED, whatever you like. An alternative would be to think, oh, maybe I'll go for coses, and you could use this connection. Sine squared plus cos squared makes 1, so sine squared is 1 minus cos squared x. And then think, what's the connection between cos squared x and cos x? Again, it'd be better to write it at the side and then bring it in. You've got cos 2x is 2 cos squared x minus 1. Now, you do have the 2 there, but I think I'll just rearrange that into... That means cos squared x would be... Take the one across and add it in half it. It would be a half of 1 plus cos 2x. That's a very common one to use in integrations later on. You can't integrate cos squared x because it's a function of a nonlinear function. But since it's equivalent to this, this can be integrated. And then pop that in. It's a bit messier doing it this way. So you've got 2 times 1 minus a half of 1 plus cos 2x. Again, giving the reason, because I used this identity here. Now apparently that gets you a mark, but then you have to go through this to eventually tidy up. It's a bit longer this way. So that's going to be 2 times 1 is 2, minus, and that's just one of these. So it's minus 1, and minus minus be minus this part here, 2 times that's still 1, minus cos 2x, which equals 1 minus cos 2x, which equals right-hand side. It's a bit longer that way. Basically because there was no need to change sine squared into cos squared to use this cos 2 identity. Now, the alternative technique is to treat the two parts independ independently. Rather than trying to work your way through the algebra to change one side into the other. 
what you could say is, but you have to do them independently. Let's sort this side out and see what it comes to. Let's sort this side out. So this side here would be 1 minus cos 2x. That's this side. Then as before, you'd say, well, I could change that into 2 sine x cos x times tan is sine x over cos x. And for the right-hand side, I could change that into 1 minus. Now, cos 2x would be, and then you'd have to think just a wee bit in advance because I want to make it match this side. It can be 2 cos squared minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sine squared. But I can see that's got sine squared in it, so I'll go for 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Tidy this side up, and you've got 2 sine squared x, and that's all you've got there. And 1 take away 1 is 0. Take away that negative makes that 2 sine squared x. And there you are, both sides are the same. So now you can say left-hand side equals right-hand side. Required result. Identity proved. Whatever you wish to write. Maybe I'll put this down. Identity demonstrated. How about that? Anything you like there. Notice it's simpler, taking the two sides independently and showing that they come to the same expression. It's usually taken as the easy way out, because you've not gone all the way. But doing it this way can translate to simply doing the right-hand side if you just follow that through backwards. So once you've got to this, you go to this stage here and write it backwards, and then you've got it down one side where the left-hand side has been completely transformed into the original right-hand side. It's not really cheating, you could do the right hand side separately. Go through the left hand side till you get to this expression and think, right, just now work my way back up. So it'll be 1 minus 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And then that goes back up to 1 minus cos 2x, which is the right hand side. And there you go, there's that brave way of doing it all the way down, apparently, because you really did this separately, but then you wouldn't show that. It looks as if you did it all yourself. And part B then, for two marks. Given that f of x equals this, which was the left-hand side, find the derivative. Well, you don't know how to differentiate that. It's a product in the first place, and you don't know how to differentiate tan anyway. But you knew it was equal to this, so instead of that, you're going to differentiate this. So I'll just rewrite it. So instead of differentiating that, since it's identical to 1 minus cos 2x, I'll differentiate that instead. So the constant term will disappear. Negative of, now cos goes to negative sine, so I'll just put that in, the negative sine of 2x multiplied by the inner derivative, which is a 2. So there you go, that's positive 2, so it's 2 sine 2x. And the marks were, one mark just for spotting you could differentiate this instead because it's identical, and then differentiating it. Or, since on your way to doing that, showing that identity, that went down to 2 sine squared, that's also equal to 2 sine squared, you could have done this. f of x is 2 sine squared x. And differentiate that instead. Maybe I'd better write that the function of a function way. And then say, so what's f dash x multiplied by the power? Take 1 off the power, so it drops to 1, then multiply by the inner derivative, which is cos x. And of course, that's exactly the same as, now, two lots of that would be 2 sine x, would be sine 2x, so that's equal to 2 sine 2x. But again, that, you could do it this way, and then using that instead would have been the first mark, and obtaining this would be the second mark. But of course, they're completely identical.